enjoy the hour. This is the time for the hour of blessing to feed on the bread of life. So get into and enjoy the hour. This is the time for the hour of blessing to feed on the bread of life. So get into and enjoy the hour. This is the time for the hour of blessing to feed on the bread of life. So get into and enjoy the hour. This is the time for the hour of blessing to feed on the bread of life. Greetings, it's blessing time. God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Join me in the service for your personal blessing. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Today, your barrenness is coming to an end. My subject is no more barrenness. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it. And rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. No more barrenness. Adam was created a fully grown up man. He had no past. He had no experience. His mind was empty. He was innocent. And the first words that came from the mouth of God to Adam, what he heard was, be fruitful. That was what he said. He said, be fruitful. It was a command for him to be fruitful. And I want you to know that everything that God has created has been designed to be fruitful. Everything God created reproduces. It will increase. Look at the plants. Look at the trees. Look at human beings. Look at animals. Look at churches. Look at businesses. All of them have the capacity to reproduce. Many Christians have settled for barrenness. You may be experiencing barrenness in your life. Barrenness in your womb. Barrenness in your relationships. Barrenness in your spiritual life. Barrenness at work. Barrenness in business. Lack of fruit. What is supposed to be happening is not happening in your life. You see, the correct understanding of the words of God given to Adam will change your outlook. He said to him, be fruitful and multiply. That's what he said to him. You see, when we understand these words, when we discover the revelation behind these words, we will recover. Unless you discover, you will not recover. But when you discover, you recover. And when you recover, you have impact. And when you have impact, you have influence. May somebody here recover. May somebody here discover. Because when you discover, you recover. And today, by the grace of God, you are going to discover that you were made to be fruitful. You were not created to be a loser. You were not created to be defeated. You were not created to be an underdog. You were created to be fruitful. You are wired to reproduce.
There are three things that I want to share with you and will be done. Number one, you are designed to be fruitful. And when I'm talking about fruitfulness, I am not talking about having too many children. There are some who have taken that personally and they are having a baby every year. And every year they say, the word says be fruitful and multiply. So as far as I'm concerned, we are fruitful and we are multiplying. You are a fool. The world already has 6.4 billion people. It is full as it is. Put a plug. What the word is saying is to be fruitful in every area of your life. Every area of your life. You need to be fruitful in every area of your life. That's what we are talking about. From the beginning of creation, God created man with the capacity to be fruitful. God has designed you to be fruitful. That is for you to reproduce, for you to increase. He has put inside you all what it takes to be fruitful. You see, every manufacturer, when they manufacture a product, they will subject it to many tests. They want to know what the product can do. They want to know the capacity of the product. And after they've tested it, they certify it. When God created the man, he subjected him to tests. And he pronounced him fruitful. Are we together? He said to him, be fruitful. You have what it takes to be fruitful. I have wired you to be fruitful. You have all you need to be fruitful. You are... Do you know? Think of it, think of it, think of it. Let me, let me think with you for a minute. Think of a baby. When the baby is born, do you know that the baby has everything it will need to be an adult? Because you have been wired. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we have a covenant with God for fruitfulness. We have a covenant with God for fruitfulness. We were designed to be fruitful. We were made to be fruitful. There is, we have been wired for it. So it doesn't matter who you are. I came to tell you that you are wired to be fruitful. You may not have babies now, but it does not mean you won't have babies. You already are pregnant inside you with babies. You may not be fruitful in your business, but you know as far as God is concerned, he has already wired you to be fruitful. You may not be fruitful at your place of work, but as far as God is concerned, he has wired you to be fruitful. So every one of us has the capacity to be fruitful. So I came to tell you today that barrenness will not be your portion. I came to tell you that barrenness will not be your portion. You will not die without children. You will not die a poor man. You will not die a struggler. You are going to rise from where you are. Because no more barrenness. In this conference, the anointing of God is breaking every barrenness that you have. I came to prophesy to you that your finances are going to grow. Your business is going to grow. Your business is going to grow. You will pass your exams. You will not fail your exams. I came to prophesy that you are going, you are going, your church will grow. Your church will grow. Your business will grow. Your, your life will grow. Because you are wired to be fruitful. As I leave, there is only one word I want to leave you with. No more barrenness. Turn to your neighbor and say, no more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more.
more barrenness. I will be fruitful. If you have been barren as a woman, under this anointing, I want you to have twins. Because I came to declare no more barrenness. No more barrenness. Tomorrow when you go, some of you when you go to your house today, do me a favor. Stand in the bedroom and begin to dance and say no more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more. Some of you do me a favor. When you get to your dying business, dance there and say no more barrenness. When you get to your work which is going down, dance there and say no more barrenness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is over. Your shame will be removed today. Your reproach will be removed today. They will no longer call you barren. Because something is coming upon you. An anointing for fruitfulness is coming upon you. And you will bear fruit. And you will expand. And you will grow. You will expand to the left. You will expand to the right. Something is going to happen in your life. Because God is moving in your life. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. Whatever caused the barrenness, whether it is of man, we break it. Whether it's a curse, we break it. Whether it be whatever it is, we break it in the name of Jesus. There shall be no more because you cannot curse what God has blessed. God said, be fruitful. God said, be fruitful. God said, be fruitful. And you just receive and say, Amen. 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 I will be fruitful. Hallelujah. No more barrenness. That's what I came to share with you. The second thing is you have a seed of fru fruitfulness in you. You have a seed of fruitfulness in you. Tell your neighbor, touch them and squeeze their hand and say you have a seed of fruitfulness in you. Listen to me. Be fruitful. Suggest that God has placed a seed in man. Because fruits come from a seed. Did you hear what I said? Which means God has put a fruit in you. A seed in you. And the seed is what produces fruit. So you have a seed which is in you. God has deposited. He has invested into you. A seed. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Turn there. The Bible says. God is saying. Before I formed you. In your mother's womb. I separated you. And appointed you. To be a prophet. When you were still floating. In your mother's womb. When you were not even an embryo. When you were not even anything to talk about. I already knew you. When did God know you? Not when you were born. Before. And then he says. While you were in your mother's womb. I put a seed of a prophet. Do you know? That's when God put the seed in you. When you were in your mother's womb. It was there. So when you were growing up, you were behaving very strangely. Because of the seed. The seed. The seed. Do you know? When you were in your mother's womb, God put a seed of a businessman. 
He put a seed of a pastor. He put a seed of an administrator. He put a seed of a politician. He put a seed inside you. You see, God does not work outside in. He works inside out. Inside out. Inside out. Hey, do you hear what I'm preaching today? He works how? Inside out. So you see, it is what you already have which manifests. If you don't have anything, there's nothing to manifest. But I have good news for you. Every one of you, you have a seed inside you. You didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me. You have a seed. People may call you a failure, but you still have a seed. People may call you a useless man, but you still have a seed. Whether you like it or not, you have a seed. So success is knowing your seed. Can I develop this? Do you know? For some people, the seed is in the hand. It manifests from inside to the heart. They are carpenters. They work with their hands. That's the seed they have. For others, it is the voice. Like you. The voice. And it manifests. How are we together? For others, it is the mind. The seed is in the mind. They know how to think and do things. But for others, it is in the feet. Kalusha wale. The seed. The seed. The seed. Are we together? You see, you need to discover, then you recover. You have a seed. The Bible talks about the seed in your hand. The seed in your mind. That's what the Bible talks about. So what I'm trying to tell you is that while you are behaving defeated, while you are behaving like a failure, God has not let you down. God has put a seed in you. The problem is you have not discovered who you are. The day you discover who you are, then you begin to be fruitful. 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 In the name of Jesus, you will discover. God has wired you to be fruitful. Fruitful. Do you know there are people there are people. You ask him, how do I know where my fruit, fruit fresh is? There is an area in your life where you just follow. There is an area in your life where you don't struggle. There is an area in your life that just flows. <laughs> I mean, look at Vincent. When he picks up the mic to sing, he's not struggling. But for some of us, all for tune. How are we together? Some of these men, give them a microphone, they have no message, they'll find one. Immediately they hold the microphone, the message comes. Why? Because that's their area. There are some who are business people. They just flow in it. If you claim to be a businessman, you are making losses after losses after losses. And now you are deep in debt. Before you go to prison, stop. There is a fruit inside you. I came all the way from Lusaka to announce to you that you are pregnant. You are carrying a seed, a seed of your destiny, a seed that will define you, a seed that will show you who you are. And when you discover the seed, you will arise. Hi, my name is Mr. Dino. 
In the year 1996, the Lord used this program to speak to me. I had phobias of all kinds and today I'm healed and I'm a living miracle of what he did that day through the Bishop, Ima Khan. Become an Hour of Blessing partner today. You can become an Hour of Blessing partner today. You can choose any of the three categories. You can become a gold partner and make your monthly contributions of 75,000 and above. Or you can make your silver contributions 25,000 kwacha to 74,000 kwacha. Or make your bronze contributions of 5,000 kwacha to 24,000 kwacha. Your sowing into the hour of blessing will surely give you good reward. As the scripture says, for it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Breath of Life Youth Ministry, the Joshua Generation, presents the annual National Youth Camp, dates 26th to the 30th of December. Venue, Cowetry Institute. Theme, Behold, the old has gone and the new has come. Speakers include Bishop Joe Imakando and other mighty men of God with a word for the season. Other activities include games, workshops, and a concert on the third day. Registration, 60,000 kwacha, inclusive of food and lodging. JG, Joshua Generation, preparing to take over. you that will define you that will tell you what you are wired for the reason you don't think the way others think is because of what you carry the reason people cannot understand you is because you cannot understand yourself because of what you are carrying you have a seed inside you let no man put you down let no man put you down let no woman put you down there is a seed that you carry you are not a nobody god does not make nobodies there is a seed that you carry. You need to ask yourself, who am I? What is the seed that is in me? I came to prophesy to the baby that you carry, that you need to manifest. And I pray that by the end of this, this message, some of you will begin to manifest. You will manifest the seed of a prophet, the seed of an apostle, the seed of a pastor, the seed of a businessman, the seed of an accountant. It will manifest. Something will come out of you. I came to prophesy that you will rise. You will not go down. You will rise because there is a seed in you. There is a seed in you. There is a seed in you. Do you know one of the most, the richest place on earth is not the bank. It's the graveyard. That's where people have been buried with their dreams. They've been buried with the seed inside. And if you are not careful, you will join the mosque. But you need to understand that there is a seed. The reason why you see us shining and shaking and succeeding is because we have discovered the seed. Are we together? We discovered the seed. And the only difference between you and me is that me, I know my seed. You, you don't. That's the difference. There's nothing. The day you discover your seed, no man will intimidate you. No woman will intimidate you. You'll stand shoulder to shoulder with the other businessmen. You'll stand shoulder to shoulder with other pastors. You'll stand shoulder to shoulder with other politicians because there is something that is inside you. You have a seed. And the seed will result in fruitfulness. 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 You know, if you followed what all the speakers were preaching, this particular conference, I don't think we've had such a powerful conference as this one. But if you were following, there's been one theme we've been talking about. And it's about fruitfulness. Watch. Look around you. What do you see? What 
you see. You will see the fruit of the hands of people. Look around you. Look around you. Look around you. What do you see? When you look at a car, it's a fruit of someone's hands. You look at a computer, it's a fruit of someone's mind. Look around, you see a building, it's a fruit of somebody. Seed will reproduce. I came to let you know that your hands are designed to bear fruit. I came to let you know that your mind is designed to bear fruit. Your mouth is designed to bear fruit. Everything that you have is designed to bear fruit. There is a portion of you that is supposed to be fruitful. And when you discover that portion, it will transform your entire life. It will result in you bearing That's what will happen to you. Let me move on to my third point. My third point. How can you be fruitful? We have established that man is to be fruitful. That you were born with a seed. You are responsible for your seed. How can you be fruitful? Let me give you six, seven things to help you. Because after this message, there are some of you who are going to put on the divine wings of speed. You will overtake those that have gone before you. There shall be fruitfulness in your life. You shall run and not be weary. You shall mount like an eagle. There are some of you, some of you are about to take off. You are like a plane that is waiting to take off. And this meeting was designed for you to take off. And you are about to take off. The engines are running. The engines are running. You are ready to take off. And when you take off, nobody will be able to catch you. If you are the one, shout hallelujah. You are going to take off. That is why all this week you have been bubbling inside. All this week you have been bubbling inside. All this week you have been praying. All this week you have been waiting upon God. Each word that has come has brought confirmation. Each word that has come has brought encouragement. Each word that has come has pointed you to something. I came to let you know that you are about to take off. You are on the runway. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. And I came to let you know, if your barrenness is to get married, you are going to get married. Next year will be a colorful year for you. You will get married. You are saying, Bishop, you don't understand. In our church, there is no man to marry me. All of them are too young. I came to let you know that our God deals in export and import. You are saying, Bishop, you don't understand. I was divorced, but I'm still young. I came to tell you, God will find another divorcee who loves Jesus and will be able to marry you. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. No more barrenness. You, as you are listening to me, you are saying, Bishop, you don't understand. I am a widow and everything they took away. They took everything from me. I am now barren. I am now suffering. I am saying to you, whatever the locusts have eaten, they will restore they will restore. If you believe this word, they will restore. If you believe this word, they will restore. God is the husband of widows. And he will take your course. Because no more barrenness. No more barrenness. You have been looking for a job and you have been barren in that area. You have written 20, 30, 40 applications. 
But this time around, only one letter will do it. Only one letter will do it. Go back. Choose the company and go back. No more barrenness. Tell your neighbor no more barrenness. No more barrenness. Let me give you number one. If you are to be fruitful, number one, discover the seed in you. All of us have different varieties of seeds. So you need to discover in order to recover. Some have a seed in the mind. Some have their seed in their hands. Some have their seeds in their feet. Where is your seed? Go to God and ask him serious questions and say, Where is my seed? Where is my seed? Because I will not be fruitful until I discover my seed. When I discover my seed, I will be fruitful. Where is my seed? Number two, value the seed. Once you know the seed you have, value it. Respect it. What you value will appreciate. What you despise will depreciate. Others may look down upon you, but value your seed. One man rebuked me in Nigeria. He was telling me about a certain bishop. He said, you see, the problem with you, Bishop Makando, is you do not take the grace of God seriously upon your life. You are not serious about the grace that you have. And I began to think, there is a way in which you can underplay what you have. Do you know sometimes we have this false humidity? False humidity everywhere. You're just hiding yourself in the name of humidity. May God deliver you. When people say, ah, you are gifted, you are very gifted with telling, you say, ah, me, I just try, oh. <laughs> Instead of you going out aggressively now to get orders, to get orders, and to move in that area, listen to me, the thing that will make you successful is when you discover that grace, then go for it. Pursue it with all that you have. If it's sterling, pursue it. If it's cooking, pursue it. If people come to your house, they eat your food, and you see them even lifting the plates and licking them, then know that your cooking is above the normal ones. You know there are some of you women, you are sitting on talent and gift. You have seen the way your husband, no matter where he goes, he, even if he has eaten elsewhere, he still has to ask for your food. Because there is something about your own. Are we together? Are we together? Number two. Number three. Protect your seed. The seed is hidden in the ground. Until it sprouts, you don't see anything. There are some of you, your seed is hidden me. Like a seed is hidden in the ground. So your gift is hidden in the seed. Until you water it, it will not come out. Until it rains, it will not come out. But this week, it has been raining here. And your seed will begin to sprout. Your seed will begin to sprout. Your seed will begin to germinate. Your seed will begin to sprout. Under this anointing, may your seed grow. May your seed break the ground. And rise. And it also means that don't go announcing your seed to everybody. Joseph did, he suffered. Keep your seed to yourself. Begin to practice where people are not seeing you. Many of you small preacher boys, you want a pulpit. Who told you that that's the only place you preach? 
You can go out in the bush. You preach to trees. In the name of Jesus, trees receive. You are practicing. You are practicing. You are practicing. But you want to put it. I mean, I, we are there. Well, how can we share the book? Some of you girls who are learning to sing, you may have a powerful voice. But instead, you know, I want to do a solo. They don't say, listen, shut up. Go to the backyard of your house and start doing solos there. Lock yourself in the bedroom and start doing solos there. Then one day, God will open the door. God will make room for your gift. The God who gives a gift makes room for the gift. And when he gives room for the gift, you will sing and without singing will lift you to another level. Prepare yourself. You have a cedar. Practice on people. If it's cooking, start with a little group. You call them, you invite them, you give them your cakes, they eat. And you just watch them. You find, they start asking, can we come to your house? Can you come to your house? For what cake? Then you know you have got them. Are we together? Now watch, 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 watch. I'm about to finish. Uh, you know, watch. Wait for God's timing. Every seed has its time. Every seed has its time. One of the most powerful lessons you learn from David was here was a man who was anointed to be king. And oil was dripping. Oil was dripping on him. And yet he went back to look after sheep. Ah. Uh -huh. I mean, some of us would have gone straight to the palace. You see, you can be anointed, but there is no stage for you. You can be anointed, but there are no people to lead. You can be anointed, but there is no church to receive you. Wait until God has made the stage for you. <laughs> Hallelujah! Don't run before your time. Many people meet with disgrace because they don't wait for God's time. Everyone has a season. Even mangoes do not just reproduce. They have their season when they come. Are we together? They have their season. And they have given a season to be ripe. Young man, wait for your season. Young lady, wait for your season. Number five, release your harvest by faith. Everything in the kingdom of God works by faith. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is what overcomes the world, our faith. Listen to me. Until you trust God that you bless the seed, you will not bless it. So you have to move by faith. And number five, number six, declare that you are designed to be fruitful. Whatever God will release in your hand must be declared in the mouth. Declare! Let me give you a bonus, number seven. God works beyond the natural laws to make you fruitful. There are some of you, you are saying, I am too old. Bishop, why did you come to preach when now I am old? Where were you? Are you mocking me? How can I be fruitful in my age? I want you to know that Sarah was 90 years old when God opened her womb. Abraham was 70 years old when God called him to save him. And I want you to know you are never too old. The fact that you are hearing this message means that something can happen in your life. And I want you to tell you you are not too young to be fruitful either. I want you to know that this is your time. 
Believe in a God of miracles. Believe in a God of fruitfulness. God can make you fruitful. No matter who you are. No matter what has happened. Listen, I talked to you about the Shunammite woman. I mean, she said about her husband. She said, my husband is too old. And I told you that when a woman says that, it's terrible. But we don't know what happened. One day this man just got up and he was all over his wife. And the next thing she was pregnant. Listen to me. There will be a miracle that will move in your life. Uh, that will cause you every barrenness, uh, every importance to cease. Uh, you shall rise and be fruitful. I said you will rise and be fruitful. I said you will rise and be fruitful. You will rise and be fruitful. Every barrenness is coming to an end. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. You are going to be fruitful. You are going to be fruitful. You are going to be fruitful. Because it's not by mighty, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Something is about to happen. I came to prophesy that you are going to have babies. You are going to have babies. You are going to have babies. Your church will grow. Your business will grow. You'll expand to the left. You'll expand to the right. You are going to be fruitful. God will see you through. Have faith in God. As I conclude, you know, fruitfulness affects all our lives. It's not just the womb. It's every part of our lives. We can reproduce. Every one of us has a seed. When we discover, we will recover. No one was born a loser. No one was born a failure. No one was born poor. These are circumstances that we find ourselves some are coming from the enemy. Some are coming from our traditions. Some are coming from wrong thinking. But we need to understand that God spoke to our father, Adam, and said, be fruitful. And we lost that fruitfulness when he died, when he sinned. But when the new Adam came, we are blessed through, uh, through Jesus Christ. He came and removed the curse of the law. So he restored the fruitfulness. Every born again believer has a right to be fruitful. Every born again believer has a right to be fruitful. Every born again believer has a right to be fruitful. In Adam we lost everything. In Jesus we received back everything. He has restored everything. So go back there and hold your head high and say, I will be fruitful. Whether the devil likes it or not, I will be fruitful. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. I will be fruitful. Whether you like it or not, I will be fruitful. I was born to be fruitful. I was blessed to be fruitful. I was blessed to be fruitful. And today I came to bless you. And I came to repeat the words that God spoke. He said, be. 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 Any barrenness is leaving your body now. And as we anoint you with oil today. Every power that has hindered you, that has made you stagnant, that has made you barren, will be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Breath of Life Youth Ministry, the Joshua Generation, presents the annual National Youth Camp, dates 26th to the 30th of December. Venue, Cowetry Institute. Theme, Behold, the old has gone and the new has come. Speakers include Bishop Joe Imakando and other mighty men of God with a word for the season. 
Other activities include games, workshops, and a concert on the third day. Registration 60,000 kwacha, inclusive of food and lodging. JG, Joshua Generation, preparing to take over.